this week's video I'm decorating a journal. I'm using pockets, paint and envelopes making something really special. I'm going to embellish the front cover using a layering technique and I'll pop an envelope in the back here, maybe stuffed with some goodies. A pocket will go at the front and we'll wander through these pages adding belly bands and tags. I'll share lots of examples to inspire your own creative play and I'm starting with the cover, I want a really personal design. I've cut up some scrapbook paper here and I've gathered a few supplies. And if you share my paper passion and you love making journals, then hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. I have lots more videos and ideas to come. I'm using a few past projects here to steal ideas for the cover. I just want to make things easy, which is really what this channel is all about. I'm choosing a focal point to go on the cover and to make it really personal I'm using something that I've painted. When I do a journal spread I do tend to create a few extras like this little red toadstool that I painted a few weeks ago, like this doodle pattern in neutrals inspired by Creation CC or this little botanical leaf that I enjoyed making a few weeks ago. I've cut up these scrapbook papers in these earthy, rich red autumnal shades. Some of them have got beautiful font on them and some nice words, and I'm even just keeping some of the scraps, they might be useful. I want to choose a few of them, maybe two or three of them, to layer under the painted focal point, so I'm just working through them and thinking which of them might work best. I really like the shape of this one, given the size of the journal. I've also pulled out some happy mail that I was really kindly sent from a friend in Sweden and I've just cut these up because of the beautiful black print on them and also the shape and size might be very useful so they might go in as embellishments. I've got a lovely old book page here, I've stamped on it and I think that will probably go in the background and another piece of happy mail with the tennis theme which is part of the journal that I've already made. I've got some gorgeous script on this one and I just need to decide which of these will work, which of them works best given the theme of the journal and the person that I'm giving it to. So I'm looking at the shape, whichever works best given the shape of the cover, but also the impact and the story that it tells. So I think I might use the toadstool. I think that one works best on this particular occasion. And as we know that those toadstools are going to be front and centre, I can make some choices now about the other pieces of paper and the bits of ephemera that will work best with it. And what I'm thinking about here is what might complement that picture, those little toadstools, what might be good at making it pop on the cover, where do the colours really marry up and work together, and also avoiding things that overly compete. This little piece of paper is pretty, but it just blends into that background and doesn't really add a lot. Whereas this tall, thin piece has got contrast, so we can see the white paper that the toadstool's painted on, that really pops out now. And I can add a little bit of an embellishment here on the bottom left. I think I just want to make that book page a little more tatty. I don't really like the idea of it being a straight line top and bottom so it's really easy just to rip a piece off and stick that on. I'm using my glue stick so that I don't get too many ripples on the page and I don't want it to be centre, I'm just making it a little bit to the left hand side of the cover just for a little bit more interest. If you'd like to see more great examples of layering and indeed a channel where I get some fantastic inspiration then visit Kay Werner Design. She makes beautiful cards and uses lovely layering techniques and I think it's a, a lovely way of getting some ideas that we can build into our journaling, our art journaling and our junk journaling. I'll leave a link in the description box down below. So I'm just creating an interesting background here putting those different pieces on top of each other but letting pieces be seen one behind the other and it's that that gives the eye something really interesting to look at. So it's a frame and a setting on which we can place our little picture, our little focal point there. 
and now I'm happy with the cover, I feel confident about building out and decorating what's inside. And for me, this is why I like to do the cover first. It just gets me in the mood and makes me feel super confident and happy. And that keeps up the pace and it keeps up the creativity so that what we end up with is something really special. I'm just finishing off with an appropriate little embellishment from one of my pieces from a Your Creative Studio box that I was very kindly sent. I'm just choosing one here that goes with the writing theme, which fits with my friend. We've got four interwoven layers here, so that means we can move on to the decoration. What I like to do is lay down some paint on a selection of the pages in the signature, much like you can see that I've done here. And it's not that I want to put some artwork down and it's not that it's fun, although it obviously is. What I want to do is to create something for the eye to look at and to react to rather than seeing a blank page. So I'm going to use my Arteza watercolour palette here and also a selection of my gouache paints that have a little bit of mica in them. The colours that I'm choosing are the ones that reflect the pages in the signature. So they are bronze, gold, pearl scarlet and pearl eucalyptus which is a subtle shade of green, a very gentle shade. And as well as adding flashes of colour to plain paper with a paintbrush, I'm going to have a play with a splatting technique, a bit like the one that we used a few weeks ago when we painted that little bit of foliage. So I'm just going to put a little bit of paint out from each of those tubes onto my paint palette and this sets me up nicely to have a good old play. When I'm making a journal for a special friend, as I am today, I feel it's really important to make it my own, to make me feel like I really own each page and there's something that I've brought to bear when I've put it together. So while I'm trying to stick to some form of colour palette to bring it all together, I also want to add one or two little personal effects. And one of the memories I have of meeting this friend for the very first time when we were actually only about four and a half years old was an individual who sat opposite me and stuck her fingers in the paint and stuck her hand on my painting. We were finger painting, so it was a very long time ago, but it was just one of those memories I have. And as well as putting my little bits of paper splat on some of these pages, you'll see that I also add three little fingerprints, three little memories of that time when we first met under the age of five. What might you add to your journal to make it really personal, to make it resonate with the memories that you have of your friend and to trigger those memories in his or her mind too? And that's really how I'm using the paint on the pages here today. I'm using colours in the pictures to prompt a choice of colour from the paint palette for me to use and I'm just opening up a page, reacting to it and choosing where to paint. So really no formula, just whatever comes to mind, vary the technique and of course have some fun. I don't paint on every page but I do use pages and colours behind on cardstock to prompt a use of colour and I use some of what's already on the page to give me a frame to paint on. I'll paint vertically, horizontally, single lines and I'll fill in circles if there's something already on the page as a pattern. So I'm just taking a few minutes to turn the pages and just add something, a layer of colour to what we already have. I'm adding an envelope at the back here and I'm going to fill it with a few goodies. I hope that those chaps getting their degree ceremony don't mind too much. I've pulled out a few and I'm going to choose from this little selection. They're ones that I've made before and I do have a video if you want to see a really easy technique for making envelopes that doesn't require a template. I'm just seeing how I might attach it. I want to make the most of all of the designs that are on the envelope, whether that's on the front or the back. And I also want a size that is complementary to the shape of that back cover. I have some extra goodies here that I've created and those might go inside. And I'm drawing on my stash of little embellishments, journaling cards, cut up pieces of scrap here, just to add some extras into those envelopes. And I might use those within the belly bands later as well. When I feel like having a really relaxing time in my craft room, I sit 
cutting up those journaling cards or painty papers like these and it means I've got a stash ready to hand to draw on in a large range of colours. This beautiful envelope in music paper is a strong candidate for use on that inside cover. It was another piece of happy mail that I received, thank you very very much. It seems to fit just perfectly and has plenty of space for added extras like this little postcard that I've made. Creativity is allowing yourself to make mistakes, art is knowing which ones to keep. It's just a simple postcard with a handmade flower, some faux stitching and a few layers. So that will go nicely on the back cover and the postcard will go inside. Whatever you add as extra embellishments in your envelopes, in any tuck spots and in any pockets, I think really it's just about making it personal, making it be something that comes very definitely from you. So it's not about having the best artwork, it's just about making it meaningful. And here I'm just gathering up my little stash of envelopes and turning the pages on the journal to find the very best place to put each of them. And that will depend upon what's already on that page. It will depend upon the strength of paper on the particular page, the shape of the envelope, and what you want to show off. Is that the front or the back? Which way do you want it to flip out if you have it as a flip out? When I'm making envelopes, I usually put the design that I want to feature on the front. And so I will normally attach the envelope with its flap to the signature page and that means I can easily see that pretty design when I fold it back in. Here I'm just adding some extra goodies and I'm trying to colour coordinate them. I've got a piece of paper there from a pad, in fact two pads here from your creative studio and they're really useful just to put a little space in so that whoever pulls them out can make a note, make a list, grab a thought or a memory. So I'm just tucking those inside and then I'll simply turn the pages on the signature and find the next best page to embellish. So I don't design this end to end from the beginning and I'm not sure that I could ever do that. I react to what's there, I build it up, I probably have some kind of sequence that I follow each time that I create a journal, but I look for spaces, I look for shapes of page that need a bit of extra adding uh, and maybe the principle of contrast as well so do those pages work together on this page I'm going to add the envelope so that it flips out in the opposite direction and that will add a bit more interest and it's sticking out beyond the page and I quite like that so again make life easy for yourself and keep the variety going make it interesting when you turn the pages here I'm choosing a piece of painty paper and there is some theory there I guess because it's toning with the inside cover of the journal with those pink tones, those mahogany tones. And here I'm adding a small journaling card with a green pattern that's still got the same blue hue in it as for that graph paper. So again, when those little journaling cards are pulled out, they will feel like they go, they'll feel like they all pull together with the journal as a whole. One of my favourite ways of spending time in my craft room is making pockets like these. And I've pulled out a mixed collection here from my stash. I thought I'd show you a few ways that I've been using them in a couple of other journals. So here you can see a single pocket as a flip out. I have a tag here as a pocket. So that was a lot of fun to do. This is a three tier pocket with another little one tucked into it, embellished with washi. I have a larger pocket here. This is a two tier pocket, very, very easy to make. I've got videos on all of these on my channel if you want to have a look. And they're all step by step to make it really easy for you to do it too. I have a little tuck spot on the right there with a torn edge, incredibly easy. There's a flip out envelope and a teeny weeny one down here that we painted a daffodil on earlier in the spring. So lots of different ways to use pockets to make a journal very interesting. And today I'm just going to, again, walk through the journal, find spaces that warrant some extra embellishment, and then pick a pocket that works best on that page. 
This is made with vintage dictionary paper, but I've also got more modern paper here. Very white with bolder, nice font and a little bit of square, some red that goes with the toadstool. Monochrome, always useful and text that is upright on this one, so vertical, which is a little bit different. So let's see how we can put them in, which pages want a pocket on them, where should we position them, upright or horizontal, let's just have a go. What I always like to do is make the most of the paper that's already there and I find that if I start to cover up a beautiful pattern there's a voice inside that's shrieking and telling me to stop. So on this page I think I might add a pocket on the back of that ledger paper because I want to keep the page with the ledgers intact. So I've decided to stick onto the back of it and I'm choosing a pocket that has a band on it that's dark and that complements the spotty page on the right. I'm also positioning it with a little bit of a gap to make the journal easier to fold when you close it. So this white space just allows the page to close more easily. So how do you feel when you're decorating a journal? Are you ruthless and able to cover up patterns and pictures incredibly easily? Or are you like me and you're tempted to dither a bit to get the absolute best visibility of all those lovely pages that are appearing as you turn the pages? Do you have that voice in you that says eek if you cover up something beautiful? Here I'm adding a pocket that will open at the side, so that's a little bit of variety. So you'll be able to just tuck a few little extra embellishments in here. And actually at this point I'm guilty of going off piste. So I start to play at what it could look like and I really need to ah get back to the game plan and get back to filling it with the pockets that are sitting on the right there. I just thought I'd show you that, keeping this real. It is very easy to get distracted and I just get so into it that it grips me and I'm fascinated by the papers on my desk so sometimes I, I do get distracted and start to think about things which are not the task in hand but here we are back to filling the pockets putting pockets on the pages um, and I have found one here a three-tier pocket that seems to go with that vintage page on the left this more modern pocket has got something to sit on which is paint that we put on the page at the bottom there so I think that works quite nicely and I think I'll just add a little bit of ephemera in the top there. I found a lined page here which would benefit from something a little extra so I'm going to add this monochrome pocket and I think I'll let it tuck out to the left a little bit obviously still within the bounds of the journal as a whole but again something interesting and I'm just adding another couple of pieces of ephemera in colours here that still have something to do with toning with the other page so it keeps it all pulling together something cohesive. Last week when I made this journal many of you were really kind enough to leave comments and you told me that you'll be making a journal for a special friend too so it would be great to know how you're getting on with that. Drop me a comment down below, have you started it, have you put together a design, are you really excited about what it's going to look like, let me know. Here I'm using offcuts from the pages that went into the journal, that went into that first signature. The same with the spotty piece here. What I've done is make use of every little piece, so that will be a belly band, and I've also been making little tags. Nice chubby little tags with plenty of space to write, and I've just done a little bit of collage on each of them, some faux stitching, and I've also used a really old stamp, a date stamp, and that just adds a bit of texture here. Sometimes it's good to bring a few new things into our crafting and I thought I'd just share this little mini mini zine, this little fold out that I've created. I might put this into a pocket. It's just a really simple way of doing tiny little coordinated collages with maybe little pieces of paper and stamps and washi. So I've done one on the front here and added a little leaf stamp and then I've carried on with the same colours and just added them inside. That's a stamp there from your creative studio. What this adds is something to either lift out of a pocket and fold out or you could attach it on the back there. 
I've got some exciting plans for bringing some new techniques into my videos and into my crafting from January. So hit the subscribe button and make sure you get a notification so you can see those. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. I've also just acquired my first ever sewing machine and I am a complete beginner. So if any of you have any really great tips and advice, please do drop a comment down below because I would love to have all the help I can get at making best use of that. Really excited about bringing some real sewing as opposed to my faux stitching into making tags and pockets and everything you can do with a sewing machine. So I've been turning the pages in the journal to find the very best place for one of those belly bands and it balances with the green on the right I think and also is a great place for tucking extra little pieces of paper to write on. It's the red in here that I think complements that lovely warm brown. And now I'm just turning the pages to find a natural home for this cardstock. So this is thicker than that brown belly band. This is a rather blank page at the moment. I think it will work best horizontally so I'm just going to trim that down and stick it on which creates a great place for adding some extra pieces of ephemera so we can add this little card in yellow tones which goes really well with that lime green and another tag also with a little bit of pale yellow on it and I'm just working through the journal filling in pockets sorry Vetus going to cover you up using the little spaces and taking colour inspiration from what's already there so that the tags go with each page wherever possible. I really like this stage of the process. It's a chubby little journal that we're making and I know it's going to be very special. It's time to add a pocket to the inner front cover and I'm using another piece of happy mail that I've cut down. It's got this beautiful script on it, which goes with the writing theme that is part of the signatures. And I'm just making life very easy, sticking it down in a way that it abuts with the page on the right. Is that the right word, abut? Let me know. So that will take a little card that I've made, a bit like the one that we put in the envelope at the back. I've stamped a thank you on it. I've added my faux stitching and a little five petal flower. Again, I've got a video on making really easy flowers. If you want to find that on my channel, I'll leave a link in the description box down below. And this is my two signature junk journal, designed and decorated with a special friend in mind. We've used paint, lovely papers, fold outs in the middle. We've added tags, pockets, and lots of envelopes. I'm thinking of making a bag from book pages to pop this into to make it feel really special. So if you're interested in seeing that, let me know. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to see more like this. And I really look forward to having some junk journaling fun with you in a week's time. <laughs>